How's it going, guys? This is Dan with Joe with the Old Plot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of throwing this video together right in the moment because there's something on my mind. Um, I've been thinking a lot about Rafael Mendes and kind of his game, or Rafael Mendes and his game, and how he's been taking advantage of people in the gi or without the gi, and the different nuances that he kind of brings to the table and uses in a unique way to beat people. Um, and after watching a bunch of his stuff, I've kind of come up with the three biggest principles that I think are what he uses to take advantage of other people and end up winning those big picture competitions, notably the Abu Dhabi if we're talking submission grappling. Um, and the first of which that kind of comes to my mind and that I've seen time and time again in all this, his uh, matches is um, getting into entangled positions. And it, it's kind of like a broader picture concept that I think is kind of... It's kind of a theme at the lighter weights anyway. Like when you start getting below 170 and below 160, I think you see less and less scissor sweeps. You see less and less flower sweeps. You see less and less traditional butterfly sweeps. And if you do, they're very much not clean. They're very much scrappy and very like, like two insects kind of bouncing off each other. It's very, very tangly and messy. Um, and Mendez is very good at getting into tangled positions at the lighter weights. You see positions like Footlocks get slipped into. He's very good at getting into the 50-50 guard. Um, he'll work stuff like prying the foot out, then end up in leg lock orientation, being able to get on top with this or attack the foot. Um, spinning into the 50, obviously. Or he does a lot of inverted stuff and dipping underneath his opponents and getting into all these tangly, weird positions where, again, in a scramble, and little guys love scrambling, in a scramble, he usually can take advantage of those grammars to be able to get on top first before the other guy does, and that's how he gets his two points. And if he doesn't, he's still on bottom, he didn't lose points, so bottom bang, bottom boom. Um, and this kind of ties into his second bigger picture principle, in my mind at least, uh, which is getting to the base quick. That's like a massive, massive thing with Mendes. Um, after watching a lot of his matches, I think that in almost any position, no matter where he is, if he's in his guard, if he's one leg forward, if he's upside down, no matter where he's at in a match in relation to his, uh, his opponent, he's half a millisecond away from being here, no matter where he is. Um, so, easy examples would be if he's playing De La Hiva or reverse De La Hiva, which he plays a lot, like this, a lot, a lot, a lot of good examples of just booting off the hook, taking the leg, controlling their base. So, as he gets his base underneath his own control, so as he brings his base to himself and, and establishes it, he also takes his opponent's base with him and bangs able to get on top. Um, very, very common. Even in, if we're in some kind of 50-50 orientation, bang, through here, he's very, very good at either sweeping with it and already having his leg out while he gets on top, or he's good at detangling and ending, ending up being the guy who ends up on top. Um, because again, at the lighter weights, it's less about guard passes and more about sweeps. Who can take advantage of those scrambles? And his ability to get to his base quickly, very, very, very big for him, in my opinion. Um, you'll even, even saw Curry, I can't really do it justice, but in the Abu Dhabis, when he was with Cobrini in the finals, he was inverted on a leg, like this, had the leg floated, and ended up bouncing back to his feet, boom, and almost coming up to a single. Like, in the weirdest positions, always, always, always able to get to his base, which to me is very impressive and something they use as well. And both of those skills, the entangled positions and getting to his base quickly, tie into the final concept that I think is his biggest and most unique contribution to the game of Jiu-Jitsu, which is taking the back. But he doesn't do it in the traditional way. Um, I saw a lot of Marcelo for a long time. You see Marcelo make arm drags very well, boom, to get to the back. Or you'll see a lot of guys work under hooks and get a little pop to the back from there. I think that stuff is getting more and more predictable. That kind of slick um, around the transverse plane of the opponent kind of back take is getting a little bit more predictable. Mendez is very good at taking people's back from getting behind them. So a traditional back take involves getting in a position kind of like if I was to arm drag black here, boom, right now we're both in kind of a similar spot. I have his arm, he has mine. It's really about who can bring their chest to the other person's back first. So generally speaking, because he has the ground in his way, I'm going to be able to get on top and take advantage. Now, Mendez does this, except he doesn't do it in the transverse, he does it in the sagittal. So he'll be here, let's say Andrew's standing, he'll play, play his inverse still heave, go upside down, dip a knee, and then start coming forward here. And now, it's, we're not, this, isn't, this isn't a transverse plane at all. I'm going forward. I'm coming up through the legs into his back. And now in a position like this, again, he has the ground in his way, but if I can get to my base, the ground is not in my way. Boom. I get on his back, sink both hooks, and choke him out. Unless you're Leo Vera, then he just goes for the face. Yeah, unless, unless you're Leo Vera, then he just crushes your face. But um, for most guys, he's going to sink the choke. So again, I'm here with Andrew. Let's say, even if he's standing up, and again, Menace has a thousand ways of getting here, but it's all a lot of them are through the sagittal plane. This way he takes advantage 
of a lot of guys. I think in the Abu Dhabi hit transitions like this, like eight of them on Cobrino over the course of their match. So I'm here again. Even if he can't dip this knee through, which I think is his preference, even if he can't, he'll end up here and use his shin in the back of the knee. Chop down, chop down, chop down, down into the scrambling, and then up trying to get on top, boom, sink the hooks and get the back. Or even, even in a traditional full lock orientation, if we're here, if you're down on one knee, you're down, yeah, just one knee, and end up in some kind of like leg lock spot, swim through, and now again, I'm coming through the back. I'm not taking Andrew's back, I'm coming around him. I'm coming up through the bottom of him. I'm coming up through his legs. Bang, climbing the notches, setting the hooks, and getting to the back. So for me, those three concepts, the, the concept of getting into entangled positions well, which for me is, is really, I think, the, um, one of the keys of kind of where the little man game is going. I think you're going to see less and less guys at lighter weights trying to play like uh, Hodger Gracie. You're going to see more and more scramble quick games. So he has that going for him. Obviously very good at scrambling and ending up on top first, getting to his base very well, and taking the back in an entirely different plane that is largely, largely neglected in my mind. So I think that you know maybe you won't become Rafael Menez if you use those three concepts, but at least you get a little bit of insight into one of the best guys in the world are doing in order to take advantage of their opponents.